What up, guys? Well, Mr. Dan Terry Marie Mel, you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Orlando for Monday, February 5th, 2024, delivering some of your stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at The Enter Report, or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for The Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. I hope everyone had a fantastic weekend. Britain's King Charles III has been diagnosed with cancer, Buckingham Palace announced on Monday. A statement issued by the royal family did not indicate what type of cancer the 75-year-old king has, but specified it as a separate health issue from a prostate procedure he went underwent last month. The statement reads, during the king's recent hospital procedure for benign prostate enlargement, a separate issue of concern was noted. Subsequent diagnostic tests have identified a form of cancer. The royal family said Charles has begun a regular schedule of treatments to address the cancer and has been advised to postpone all of his public-facing duties. The 66th Annual Grammy Awards in Los Angeles saw Taylor Swift winning Album of the Year for Midnight's. The ceremony hosted by Trevor Noah ended with Swift accepting the Best Pop Vocal Album Award after earlier accepting the award for Best Pop Vocal Album and announcing her next album. Billy Joel took the stage to perform Turn the Lights Back On, his first new song in 30 years, and received a standing ovation from the crowd. He closed the show with an encore performance of You May Be Right. Meryl Streep and her son-in-law Mark Ronson presented the Record of the Year Award to Miley Cyrus for Flowers. She performed the song earlier in the evening and also earned the Grammy for Best Pop Solo Performance for the same song. Burner Boy became the first Afrobeats performer to ever take the Grammy Award stage, Sunday night performing Sitting on the Top of the World alongside Brandy and 21 Savage. The performance was followed by Samara Joy, the 2023 winner of the Grammy for Best New Artist, presenting this year's award to Victoria Monet. And that earlier collected awards for Best R&B Album for Jaguar 2 and Best Engineered Album in Non-Classical alongside John Kersey, Kyle Mann, Patricio Tizio Pigliapoco, Neil H. Pogue, Todd Robinson, and Colin Leonard. Joni Mitchell earned a standing ovation for her performance of her 1966 song, Both Sides Now. She earlier collected the Best Folk Album Award for Joni Mitchell at Newport Live and a Lifetime Achievement Award. She was followed by Travis Scott with the performance of Fiend with Playboy Cardi. Lionel Richie presented the award for Song of the Year to Billie Eilish for What I Was Made For from the film Barbie during Sunday's ceremony. The song also earned Edith the Grammy for Best Song Written for Visual Media. The Dr. Dre Global Impact Award was presented to Jay-Z. Steve Wonder paid tribute to his longtime friend, the late Tony Bennett, by singing a duet of For Once in My Life alongside a recording of the singer. Wonder then kicked, then performed The Best Is Yet to Come to kick off the In Memoriam segment, and Annie Lennox took over with the performance of Nothing Compares to You by the late Sinead O'Connor. The memorials continue with John Baptiste and Anna Nesby performing a melody including Bill Withers' songs Ain't No Sunshine and Lean On Me, closing with the sound of blackness, optimistic in tribute to Clarence Avon, the black godfather. Oprah Winfrey then announced Fantasia Barino paying tribute to Tina Turner with a performance of Proud Mary. You two performed live from the Las Vegas Globe and presented the award for Best Pop Vocal Album to Taylor Swift, for Midnight's. Swift announced during her acceptance speech that her next album, The Torture Poets Department, will be released April 19th. She posted a preview of the album's cover on Instagram. Multiple nominee Olivia Rodrigo performed Vampire, and Lizzo presented the award for Best R&B Song to Zizza for Snooze. Zizza earlier collected awards for Best Pop Duo Group Performance alongside Phoebe Bridgers for Ghost in the Machine and Best Progressive R&B Album for S.O.S. The show opened Sunday with Dua Lipa performing her single, Training Season. Tracy Chapman and Luke Combs then performed Fast Car, the song originally written and recorded by Chapman, earning Combs a nomination this year for Best Country Solo Performance. 
says it took the stage to perform Snooze and Kill Bill. It was followed by Billy Idish performing What Was I Made For? Several awards were announced prior to the broadcast on CBS. Sarah and talk show host Kelly Clarkson brought her seven-year-old son Remington as her guest to the Grammy Awards on Sunday. Clarkson wore a white off-the-shoulder gown while Remington donned a red tuxedo for the occasion. The child is one of two she shares with her ex-husband, talent manager Brandon Blackstock. They also have a nine-year-old daughter named River. Clarkson and Blackstock were married from 2013 to 2022. In addition to working on her eponymous talk show, Clarkson recently hosted the Rockefeller Center Christmas Tree Lighting in New York. Musician Michael Render, better known by his stage name Killer Mike, was arrested in L.A. on Sunday following an alleged altercation backstage at the Grammys, where he won three awards. The LAPD said in a statement Sunday night that Render was in the process of being released after he was booked for misdemeanor battery. It said on Sunday, February 4th, just after 4 p.m., a male adult was detained and handcuffed for a physical altercation that occurred at the 700 block of Chick Hearn Court. The suspect was placed under arrest and was transported to the LAPD Central Division. The LAPD later identified the suspect as 40-year-old Render. The incident happened at the Los Angeles Crypto.com Arena before the start of the 66th Annual Grammy Awards, according to The Hollywood Reporter, which reported that Render was seen in handcuffs being escorted to a security room in the facility. The arrest came as Render won Best Rap Album for Michael and Best Rap Performance and Best Rap Song for Scientist and Engineer at the awards show. Paramount Pictures is giving a glimpse of the release of If. The studio shared a teaser for the film Monday that will air during Super Bowl 58. The Super Bowl spot show cast member Randall Park impersonate If writer and director John Krasinski. Park insists that he is Krasinski as the film star Ryan Reynolds protests and quizzes him about Krasinski's life. The teaser also features footage from Ev, a live-action and anime and fantasy comedy following a young girl, played by Kaylee Fleming, who discovers she can see everyone's imaginary friends, known as Ifs. Krasinski, Fiona Shaw, Phoebe Waller-Bridges, Louis Gossett Jr., Alan Kim, Liza Colon Zayas, and Steve Carell also star. Paramount released a teaser trailer for the movie in uh, December. If opens in theaters May 17th. The film will mark Krasinski's first release as a writer, director, and producer since A Quiet Place Part 2 in 2020. Netflix is teasing the new film Scoop. The streaming service shared a first look photos for the movie Monday featuring Rufus Sifwell and Gillian Anderson. Scoop is based on the Sam McAllister book Scoop behind the scenes of the BBC's most shocking interview. The film revisits Prince Andrew's televised 2019 interview with journalist Emily Metalis on the BBC program Newsnight, which focused on his relationship with convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein. Sedwell plays Andrew, the son of Queen Elizabeth II, while Anderson portrays Metalis. The cast also includes Billy Piper, Kelsey Hans, and Connor Swindells. Scoop shows the inside track of the women that broke through the Buckingham Palace establishment to secure the scoop of the decade that led to the catastrophe fall from grace of the Queen's favorite son. The film is written by Peter Moffat and directed by Philip Martin. Begravia, the next chapter actress Harriet Slater and War Horse alum Jeremy Irvine are to play the leads in Star's Outlander prequel, Blood of My Blood. Production is underway in Scotland on the 10-episode first season of the franchise Next Time Traveling Drama. Jimmy Roy and Hermione Corfield co-star. The show will explore the 18th century and Scottish lives of Ellen McKenzie, played by Slater, and Brian Fraser, played by Roy, Jamie's parents, as well as Claire's mother and father, Julian Morstan, played by Corfield, and Henry Buchan, played by Irvine, who are living in World War I uh, England. Matthew B. Roberts is the showrunner, executive producer, and writer on both series, said in a statement on Monday, we're thrilled to be telling the stories of these two couples. The origins of their relationship explores universal themes that transcends time periods. We're so excited for fans to discover and fall in love with these characters and their love stories. 
The franchise is based on the Diana Gabaldon's best-selling fantasy novels. The flagship series is going into its eighth season at Stars, with Sam Hewen playing Jamie and Kentria Balfi playing Claire. Cobra Kai has started production on its sixth and final season. Netflix announced the news Monday alongside a video featuring Ralph Macchio, William Zapka, and other cast members. Cobra Kai is a sequel to the Cobra Kai films starring Macchio and Zapka as Daniel LaRusso and Johnny Lawrence. The show follows an adult Daniel, played by Macchio, and Johnny, played by Zapka, as the former rivals guides a new generation of students at the Cobra Kai Karate Dojo. Courtney Hengelier, Oxola Maduena, Tanner Buchanan, Mary Mouser, Jacob Barant, Martin Cove, Peyton Liz, Valerie Rubio, Thomas Ian Griffin, and Dallas Dupree Young also star. Buchanan, who plays Robbie Keane, said in the teaser, we've been, we've been very hard at work behind the scenes. It's a little bittersweet because it is the last season, but it's going to be the biggest, baddest season yet. In addition, Cove, who plays John Kreese, promises a lot of surprises in season six. Cobra Kai creators Josh Held, John Hurwitz, and Hayden Schlesenberg announced in January 2023 that season six will be the show's last. The trio said in November that the series finale will leave room for potential spin-offs in the future. Candy Burris is leaving Real Housewives of Atlanta after 14 seasons. The singer, songwriter, and television personality announced a break from the Bravo reality series Sunday ahead of season 16. Burris was attending the Grammy Awards when she discussed her future with Real Housewives of Atlanta with Variety's Mark McCallan on the red carpet. Burris says, I'm not really keeping up right now. I decided I'm not coming back this year. It's been 14 seasons, and they allowed us to sit around for a little too long. During that time, I had started working on a lot of other things. I got some nice big projects coming soon, so I'm super excited about all those things. She also added, but it's not just that. It's just like after you really have time to think. And a friend of mine was like, why you keep doing it? And I was like, well, I think uh, because I've just been doing it so long, it feels weird to think not to do it. So I was just like, you know what? I'm going to take a break. I'm going to take a moment. I'm not coming back this year. Sources confirmed to people that Burris was offered a contract for season 16, but turned it down. Uh, Burris joined Real Housewives of Atlanta in season 2 and appeared as a series regular through season 15, which concluded in September 2023. Season 15 also starred Sherry Whitfield, Kenya Moore, Drew Sidora, Marlo Hampton, and Sonia Richards Ross. Mayeda Shaw Carter and Courtney Rhodes also appear as friends of the Housewives. Burris is also a Grammy winning singer songwriter whose claim to fame was with the girl group Escape. The Barry Emmy winner Ayo Adibri seems to acknowledge mocking Jennifer Lopez's singing and acting talent on the Scam Goddess podcast four years ago while hosting this weekend's edition of Saturday Night Live, for which Lopez was the musical guest. Comments that Debrie made about Lopez's music career being one long scam refers, refers, uh, resurfaced days before the women were to work together on SNL, prompting media speculation about whether there would be tension on the set. Debrie, Mickey Day, Chloe Flyman, and Andrew Demuscus appeared on the Fox uh, game show Why'd You Say It? as the fictional contestants challenge to answer questions about comments they made on social media. Keenan Thompson played the game show host, Danny Donegan, and asked the DB's character, Annie, why she remarked die on an adorable video of Drew Barrymore. After the contestants all admitted to making eyebrow-raising remarks online just to get attention, a DB, uh, Annie dramatically declared, okay, okay, we get it. It's wrong to leave mean comments or post comments just for clout or run your mouth on the podcast and you don't consider the impact because um, you're 24 and stupid. But I think I speak for everyone when I say from now on, uh, we're going to be a lot more thoughtful about what we post online. She then hung her head. But Diane said he didn't believe her good intentions because she left a mean comment about him and his toddler son just two minutes earlier. She said, I cannot change. A debris also appeared in the send-up of the CNN Town Hall uh, 
event in South Carolina with former President Donald Trump, played by James Austin, James Austin Johnson, who is seeking the Republican nomination for a rematch against Democratic incumbent President Joe Biden in November. Fielding questions, Johnson's Trump was met face-to-face -face with the real former South Carolina governor and United Nations ambassador, Linky Haley, who wanted to know why he wouldn't re uh, debate her as she was challenged him for the Republican nomination for president. Um, the fake Trump said, Oh my God, it's her, the woman who is in charge of security on January 6, 2021. It's Nancy Pelosi. Haley said to, uh, Are you doing okay, Donald? You might need a mental comp uh, competency test. To which Johnson's Trump replied, I aced the test. Perfect score. It said I was 100% mental. Debris was allowed to ask the last question of the event. What would you say was the main cause of the Civil War? And you think it starts with an S and ends with a lavery. Uh, Haley starts with a smile. Yeah, but I'll, I probably should have said that the first time. Live from New York, it's Saturday Night Live. Uh, Lopez also performed her song, This Is Me Now, and Can't Get Enough, on the show. The comment was a response to criticism she received uh, for omitting slavery when explaining the causes of the 19th century conflict during a campaign stop in New York. In a related story, stand-up comedian Shane Gillis is set to guest host Saturday Night Live on February 24th. But Light also announced last week a new partnership with Gillis, who has headlined the hit Netflix special Shane Gillis' Beautiful Dogs. He, has been hired, he had been hired as a cast member for season 45 of the sketch comedy show, then was fired in late 2019 before the season began as videos of him making jokes about race and sexuality were circulating online. Uh, the show's rep said in a statement, after talking with Shane Gillis, we have decided that he will not be joining SNL. Uh, Gillis responded with his own statement on Twitter, now X, I'm a comedian who was funny enough to get SNL, that cannot be taken away. Rapper 21 Savage, whose album American Dream has topped Billboard's 200 chart for the past two weeks, will be the musical guest for the February 24th episode of SNL. Cara DeLevin's Jay will make her West End debut in the spring. The model actress will play Sally Bowles in a production of the musical Cabaret. DeLevin's Jay will replace singer and rapper Self Esteem, who is scheduled to give her final performance March 9th. DeLevin's Jay will mark her debut March uh, 9th at the Kit Kat Club at Playhouse Theater in London and perform through June 1st. Luke Treadway will play the MC. Cabaret featured music by John Cantor and lyrics by Frank Ebb and a book by Joe Mashafoff. The musical originally opened on Broadway in 1966 and was adapted as a 1972 film starring Liza Minnelli. Jill Halfworth, Judy Dench, Natasha Richardson, Michelle Williams, and other stars have played Sally on stage productions throughout the years. The Levin J said, There are no words to explain the excitement I have to return home to make my stage debut in such an iconic role. I'm so inspired by the brilliant actors who have played Sally in the past productions around the world, and in this one in the West End, I cannot wait to be part of this brilliant cast member and crew. 
As an actress, Delilah Vijay is known for playing Enchantress on Suicide Squad. She also starred in the series Carnival Row, Only Murders in the Building, and American Horror Story, Delicate. Sam Watterson is leaving Law & Order after more than 400 episodes, NBC confirmed. Watterson has played the District Attorney Jack McCoy since 1994, and his last episode will air February 22nd. Scandal and Ghost alum Tony Godwin will be the new district attorney on the show, which co-stars Hugh Dancy, Cameron Mannheim, Odelia Halevi, McCod Brooks, and Reed Scott. Watterson said in a statement Friday, It's been a pleasure to talk directly like this to the backbone of Law & Order's absolutely amazing audience. The time has come for me to move on and take Jack McCoy with me. There is sadness in leaving, but I'm just too curious about what's next. Um, as an actor doesn't want to let himself get too comfortable, I'm more grateful to you than I can say. Law & Order is continuing an amazing long run along with its outstanding, um, astounding comeback. It's all thanks to you and to Dick Wolf, for, but for whose vision, patience, perseverance, and unique combination of creative and business talents, None of this would have happened. I feel very blessed. I hope to see you all on the flip side. In a passing to report, Ashton Barrett, a nicknamed Family Man, who was the longtime bass player for Bob Marley and the Whalers, has died. He was 76. He died at his home in Miami, Florida. From 1972 all the way up to uh, Bob Marley's death in 1981, he and his brother, the late Carlton Barrett, were the rhythm section of the of Bob Marley and the Whalers, and their rhythm section revolutionized modern day reggae. Barrett was seventy six. Twenty One Savage's "American Dream" is the number one album in the U.S. for a second weekend, coming in number two on the Billboard two hundred charts. Dated Saturday is Morgan Wallen's "One Thing at a Time." Followed by Drake's For All the Dogs at number three, Green Day's Saviors at number four, and Noah Kahan's Stick Season at number five. Running out of the top tier are Taylor Swift's 1989, Taylor's Version at number six, Scissor's SOS at number seven, Nicki Minaj Pink Friday 2 at number eight, Zach Bryan's self titled record at number nine, and Swift's Lover at number ten. And finally, the Bryce Dallas Howard Sam Rockwell action movie Our Gal is number one in North America, earning $18 million in receipts this weekend. Box Office Mojo.com announced on Sunday. Coming in number two is The Chosen Season 4, Episodes 1 through 3, with $6 million, followed by The Beekeeper, number three, with $5.3 million, Wonka, number four, with $4.8 million, and Migration, and number five, with $4.1 million. Right at the top tier are Mean Girls at number six with four million dollars. Anyone but you at number seven with three point five million dollars. American Fiction number eight with two point three million dollars. Poor Thing at number nine with two point one million dollars. And Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom at number ten with two million dollars. And as your entertainment report for Monday, February fifth, twenty twenty four. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello. That's R A Y M E L O on Twitter at the enter report or on Instagram at the entertainment report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of the entertainment report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app. Search for the Entertainment Report and it'll take you to the page. Good night and God bless you, White.